Hey guys, how do you do? Welcome. Now for today, we're going to continue the Android a JSON series of tutorials. In today's episode, what we're going to do is simple. We're going to retrieve multiple items of data from right here at JSON, multiple fields, and then question list view. So for us, you can see right here, this one, I've said before, this one right here, this is a JSON data from this particular site, okay? These are public data. You can put into a browser and then have access to it. Now for us, what we're going to do right here, of course, these are the whole of this one. This is right here, the JSON array. You can see it's held by this particular angle brackets. Now, a JSON array, of course, consists of JSON objects. JSON objects are, of course, uh, surrounded by these braces of right here. Of course, they are separated by commas. For us, a single JSON object represents a single user. Now you can see this has an ID name, username, email, etc. For us, we're going to be interested in these three, name, username, and then the email. We're going to retrieve this particular data, both of them, and then of course show in our custom list view, okay? So guess this is it. This is uh, the site we shall be getting our data from. Of course, right here is our list view. It's empty. If we come over right here, click off our button, download JSON, then you can see right here we are able to get uh, the data that we want, okay? So you can see right here, there are 10 of them. And then you can see right here we are able to download this particular JSON data pass it and of course show it in our list view over right here guys this is it this is what we're going to look at join me we'll get started project once you've created your projects let's move over to our graduate so the first thing we we'll need to add some dependencies remember we're going to be using a floating action button it shall be clicked then of course we download our data we're going to need right here the support design uh, library then of course we're also going to have right here our card view library we're going to add it right here as a dependency please make sure you add them then of course click our sync right here to sync our project once we've done that one we're going to move over to our manifest remember we shall be talking to our internet so we're going to come right here at this particular permission for connection to the internet of course we move over to our layouts now we're going to have three layouts activity main right here is going to be generated for us by android studio we're going to also to have our content main layout content main is simple of course we're going to include our list view over right here i've given uh, an id of every course right here now this is going to be a list view but then it's going to be a custom list view so we need to define its raw model okay so this is a raw model is going to be this is what we're going to be inflate to represent a single row so you can see for us we are having three textures these these are the views that we're going to have next let's move over to very simple we're going to organize them in packages i'm having three packages m json right here this is going to contain classes relating to our json first of course downloading our json and then of course passing it a model this is the model right here our data object in this case a user of then of course mui we're going to have our adapter right here the class this case is going to derive from base adapter so what we're going to do is simple first let's come start with the user right here m model of course this is going to represent a single user for us now for us in this case right here you can see a single user our user is going to have three properties username name and then the email then we generate the getters and setters for these particular uh properties okay so for us this is simple it's our project class and that's it it's going to represent a single user for us next we're going to move over to our connector class connector this is a very simple class over right here we're going to have one method it's going to be static it's going to return for an object the method is going to take as a parameter right here a string which shall be of course a url they shall be pointing us to a json now the first thing of course we come in such a java.net.url passing in our url string of course while we do that one we shall be catching our malform url exception in case we didn't specify the right format for our url otherwise we come proceed open a connection to a url and then cast the result the result of this one of course is going to give us a url connection we cast it uh, to its subclass which is an http url connection once we do that one we come set the connection properties what's the uh, request method shall be making well for us we shall be making a get request so we come right here okay we shall simply retrieving data into application 
we're not going to be modifying any data in our server so we're making right a get request a connect timeout as well as a read timeout we're going to set them to 15k ms then of course yes our connection we're inputting data into our application we come set our do input to true then of course we're going to return this particular connection that is if everything is right otherwise if you're having an error we're going to return that particular error also right here of course we are appending this particular a term error rate is going to help us identify if we got an error so that we don't try to download while we having an error with our connection so yes this class right here as you can see is going to help us of course establish our connection right here is going to help us of course establish our connection and then of course is also where we are setting our connection properties next is let's move over to our json downloader and see how we can download some data into our application our downloader class this is all going to be downloading our data we shall connect first to our network download data in the background thread using async task then send that particular data that we downloaded to our parser class it shall be json data we shall send it to parser class for it to be passed okay the first thing is we're going to come right here we're going to have our async task so let's come right here make sure that this one over right here derive we derive from async task class we subclass our async task okay then of course right here you can see we're going to have these three methods that we're going to have to override first of course our own pre-execute then doing background then on post execute instead of our own pre-execute what we're doing right here is simple we're simply of course initializing our progress dialog then showing it instead of doing background this way shall be performing a downloading task inside the on post execute it's going to receive the result of our task okay which shall be performed of course in our doing background which in this case is going to be downloading of our data so we're going to receive those json data inside our on post execute right here the first thing we'll make sure is that we dismiss our progress dialog so yes we we'll do that one of course we're going to come right here now first let's come over the constructor we're going to pass the context url as well as our list view then of course let's come and then implement how we're going to download data so we're going to create this method i'm going to call it it's going to return for us a string we're going to call it download the method itself the first thing we need to do is to establish our connection so we're going to come object we create an object right here that you're calling connection then we call our connector class sorry our connector class dot connect remember the connect was supposed to return for us our json uh, no our it was supposed to return for us our connection object okay so we do so now the first thing we're going to do we're going to cast this connection to string then check if uh, it's an error now if it's an error of course it's going to start with the term error right here then in that case we're simply going to make sure that we of course return that particular error we don't need to download otherwise if that's not the case then of course we're going to proceed on and then download our data now to download data we do it in a try catch block first come http url connection con then we're going to assign it to our connection which is an object which of course we're going to cast to http url connection so for us what we're going to do over right here is very simple let's come over right here the first thing we're going to get our response code con.get response code we check if it's http okay okay if there's a response we're getting from the server we'll proceed on and then download our data otherwise if that's not the case then we're going to return that particular response message now for us of course we come we get our input of course from our stream right here input stream is equal to new buffered input stream instead of buffered input stream of course we're going to pass our input stream which we're going to get from our http a url connection object buffered reader we come and satiate it okay then inside it we're going to pass an instance of our input stream reader of course where we also pass our input stream we're going to have two variables line which is going to represent one line of our json data then of course json data all our json data so what we're going to be doing we shall be reading our data line by line using the read line method of our buffer reader of course meanwhile assigning it to a line method uh, variable right here okay and then of course making sure that we append all those lines to our json data at the end of the day we come close our buffered reader we close our input stream then of course we return uh, that json data 
of course we cast it to string it was a string buffer so that's it of course we come over right here doing background our task is going to be download uh, uh, downloading data then of course we're going to come right here check if our json data that starts with right here then we're going to proceed on and then say if we shall have this one then this is going to mean that we're having an error so we're going to have right here json data otherwise if that's the case then of course we're going to go ahead uh, proceed on and then of course call our parser class to pass our data yes that's it let's move over to our parser class it will be a time consuming operation depending on course on the amount of data that you are having now for us what we're going to do of course this particular class right here also we're going to make sure that we derive from async task then of course the moment we do that one we will have to provide a couple of methods right here the first one on pre execute call before doing background what are you going to do right here well we're going to initialize our progress dialog and then show it doing background this one shall be performing our passing task on post execute it's going to be called after doing background it's going to return for us a boolean whether we successfully passed or not so that's it of course right here within this class i'm going to check context json data as well as a list view so we're going to come here then for the constructor pass the three context json data and then of course our list view then of course uh, inside our doing background this shall perform our, of course performing our passing of data now to pass our data is simple we're going to have one simple method right here that's going to return for us a boolean this is our pass method so how are you going to pass first all our json data we're going to pass them in one single json array right here okay so of course we come also declare our json object then make sure this particular users right here this is the array list of course you can see it over here the array list that we've created is going to represent all the users that we've passed okay so we make sure that we clear it to avoid duplications then of course we come over right here user we declare a single user so what are you going to do next well we're going to come here and then look through a json array so we come as we look through it remember a json array consists of a uh, uh, consists of json objects we shall be getting each particular json object and then uh, right here simply by calling the get json object and then passing in our i which is our json which is actually our index okay the index for that particular json object so we assign it to this jo so we come over right here we extract the name username as well as the email by calling the get strings method and then take note right here we pass the field the way we had it of course in our json data name username as well as, as, well as our email we come over here instantiate our user object we set name email and of course is username over to that particular data object then of course we make sure that we add it to our users collection we return true right here if successful of course and then of course otherwise if you are having a json exception we are going to return false so for us how are you going to download data well not to pass data we simply call our pass method is going to pass for us our data otherwise if that's not the case then we're going to come right here check of course yeah if we've successfully passed our data we come over right here now if we successfully pass then we'll call our adapter class to bind our data otherwise we'll come over right here and then display a simple toast message so for us in this case we shall simply be saying unable to pass does it this, this is it this is our parser json parser class the next let's move over to our custom adapter it's going to be rather simple the first thing that we're going to do we're going to make sure that we derive from base adapter so we come over right here the moment we do that one we come implement a couple of methods get count the total number of users that you are going to be dealing with get item a single user get item id the position of that actually the id of that particular user in this case we shall simply use the position as the id get row this is going to return for us a single row that we've actually inflated our custom row remember this is a custom list view so for us what are you going to do well we're going to come here then for the constructor we we'll pass in our text as well as our array list of users get count we said this is going to be users dot size the total number of users you are having get uh, item this is going to represent a single user so we 
get a single user from our array list and then pass it uh, okay return it over there passing in the position of that particular user get item id we're going to use the position right here as the id then of course get view here it's going to be we shall be returning the view that we've inflated so we come right here first we're going to check to inflate our view we come check if our view first is null then if this is the case then of course we're going to inflate it by using our layout inflator from method we pass in the context then we call inflate method now r dot layout dot watch dot model okay dot model then of course we're going to come right here what's our view group well we're going to have it right here view group we pass it and then false that's the boolean asking us whether we shall be attaching the view that we've inflated to this our view group that we are having right here we say false otherwise we're going to proceed on come over right here first we're going to reference this particular text view that's going to hold for us our data okay take note we're referencing from our view object that we've inflated name txt username txt as those as our email txt then we get a single user by simply calling the get item method remember get item method we declared it right here we have it right here we overrode it over there then of course it will return for us an object we cast it to a user object of course we can set our data name txt to set data user dot get name get email and then get username this does it we make sure that we return that particular user at the end of the day this is it. this is our custom adapter class it's very simple right there so next guys let's move over to our main activity this is simple over here the first thing we have to specify the url we shall be connecting to is this json url we are dealing with the list view we declare it right here we come reference our list view from our layout then we come insertate our json downloader then once of we've insertated it we pass in right here our context our json url as well as our list view then we call the execute to start it off of course we do that one then of course inside your manifest make sure you've added the permission for connection to the internet this does it does it let's run our project no before we run our project let's move over to a json parser inside the json parser right here come here and say gv dot set adapter no not gv lv which is our list view dot set adapter so equal to new remember we have our custom adapter then we pass in the context we also pass in our users collection does it that's how we set our adapter to our list view once we done that one let's also move to our downloader right here and say new json parser start off our json parser passing in the context passing in our json data as well as our list view then of course we call execute method so that's it only those ones make sure uh, you add them then of course guys let's run our project and have a look here yeah, we are having our data we are having our simple project i just our list view right here okay make sure that your connection is on now once we've done that one we come click off our button very fast our data gets loaded and here, right here you can see we are having our data right here in our sim in our list view okay you can see the name okay the name right here the email and of course the username so this is it this is for enough for today's tutorial i'm hoping you guys have enjoyed it please if you have subscribe like the video share it and also take care i'll catch you in the next tutorial